Hey there everyone, I'm Cortexian, and this is going to be a guide to endgame cargo hauling with the Miss Call C in Star Citizen. With Alpha Patch 323, CIG advised they were going to start focusing the development Eye of Sauron onto cargo and cargo missions. As of this video, the bulk of this focus content has been delayed to 323.2 when they plan to introduce instance tangers and cargo missions utilizing distribution centers. In the current version of the game that backers have access to, 323.1, Cargo is still largely unchanged. Since the top end cargo ship currently in the game isn't intended to land during cargo operations, I figured it wouldn't hurt to make an updated guide on using it. Even if instance hangars and distribution center cargo missions are introduced, it's my belief that bulk cargo transport will not be affected. The cargo game loop is fairly simple at its core. Buy cargo at a low price from one location, then sell it at a higher price elsewhere. To min-max, you want to start to factor in transportation time as well as your costs such as fuel. Again, just like in my salvage video on screen in the corner, it's important to maximize profit over time rather than just pure profit. Before we get into the hull C, I wanted to briefly touch on cargo ship progression in Star Citizen. I'll be focusing on flyable ships rather than all ships since you can't fly a concept JPEG in the game. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive list of every valuable cargo ship in the game, it's just something to give you a basic idea as to the tier list of ships in terms of cargo space. Starting off with our tier list breakdown, we can talk about what I would classify as starter or beginner cargo ships. These will have a very low investment cost, but also have minimal cargo capacity. Ships like the Drake Cutter, Origin 135C, and Aegis Avenger Titan would fit into this category. Respectively, they have 4, 6, and 8 SCU of cargo space. This little cargo makes earning any serious legitimate profit a problem, however they may excel at high value, low density cargo of a questionable legality. These ships won't make you very much money right off the bat, so it might be worth holding off on buying them unless you're fully committed to the space trucker lifestyle. Next, we'll have the first set of ships I'd really recommend you bother looking at for cargo. These are kind of like your standard cargo models. The Consolidated Nomad, Misc Hull A, Crusader C1, and Misc Freelancer base model are excellent options here. These ships have 24, 64, 64 and 66 cargo respectively. That'll bring us to our B tier or mid-range cargo ships. The MISC Freelancer Max and RSA Constellation Taurus are options here with 122 and 168 cargo space. It's worth noting that in my opinion, the Constellation is a great platform for general gameplay as well as cargo. So of the two, it would be my recommendation with one caveat. If you're planning to use your tractor beam to handload cargo, the Max might be an easier option since you don't need to worry about an elevator to access the entirety of the ship. Now we've got the A tier high-end cargo ships like the Drake Caterpillar and Crusader C2. At 576 and 672 cargo each, this is where we start to see major gains in profitability and the ship design changes to reflect that they are dedicated cargo platforms. Of the two, the C2 is definitely the go-to for the fact that loading cargo is much easier due to the large cargo ramps on the front and rear, as well as the higher capacity. And finally, the only bulk cargo S-tier ship, the Miss Hull C, with 4,608 cargo. With such a massive jump in capacity, it really deserves to be alone in the S-tier right now. If everything goes according to plan, and with minimal bugs, the Hull C should be able to net you around 500,000 AUEC per hour of gameplay. However, as we'll soon cover in this video, things rarely go according to plan with the Hull C. A quick tangent before we get into the nitty gritty here, if you don't currently have a game package to play, but you'd like to do your part and become a star citizen, please use my referral code that's shown on screen now. This will net you an extra 5,000 starting money, and for everyone that uses my code and eventually purchases a package, I get a point that can add up to some neat in-game rewards for myself. So, if you want a boost and you like my content, please use the referral code on screen or located in the video description with some more instructions to sign up. Before you get started with your ship, it's always important to make sure your character has the basics. At the very least, I always recommend you take a couple drinks, food items, med pens, and a multi-tool with true hold tractor attachment. However, if you've run a few missions and looted yourself some decent gear, it's still best to take a full armor set, weapons, and a paramed device as well as extra ammo and refills whenever possible. In terms of equipping your hull C with upgraded systems, all you really need to change out immediately is the quantum drive. In a 3.23, we're still limited to the Stanton system, so the jump distances aren't very large. A TS2 is the fastest quantum drive you can buy for the hull C, and while not efficient, you can still travel over 530 GM on a single tank of gas. 
When retrieving your hull C, you should always endeavor to call it from a location with landing pads available. This will allow you to call up a backup ship to transport you to the hull C if any of the several spawning issues occur. The most common spawning issue is shared across all ships that utilize the docking ports. Sometimes, when you retrieve the ship from the ASOP terminal, when you reach the docking port, the port itself will be closed and disconnected from your ship. If this occurs, the only surefire way of getting to your ship is by calling another one, taking it to a landing pad, coming back to the ASOP terminals, and then calling in your hull sea again. You can then go to the landing pad where you left your transportation ship, hop in, and cruise over to your hull sea. A quick spacewalk to the hull sea airlock or elevator, and you should be good to access. Another issue that has cropped up more and more recently is that the hull C may spawn in incorrect coordinates and at an incorrect angle relative to the station docking port. If this happens, the ship can spawn partially inside the station and or docking port itself. Using a secondary ship won't work here because even if you manage to access the hull C, the geometry of the station colliding may make it impossible to access the bridge. And even if you do, it's unlikely you'll be able to depart without destroying your ship. A better option is to try calling in another ship that uses the docking ports, like an 890 Jump or Hammerhead. If you don't have these options available, you can try calling another ship and taking it to another station with docking ports to try calling your hull C there instead. Once you've accessed your hull C, head to the bridge and hop into the pilot seat at the front left. Power up with right alt plus R, then press N to start launch procedure from the docking port. Once you've been released from the port, Head over to the landing pad and into the station admin to order some cargo. I do not recommend ordering cargo while you're still attached to the docking port, as sometimes when you get launched from the port, your ship can take damage and even explode. Similar to other cargo ships, to get your cargo, you first need to report to the station admin area and interact with a commodity kiosk. However, unlike with smaller ships, once you order your cargo, you need to return to your hull sea and take it to a cargo deck to have it loaded. Sometimes, the kiosks will hang at processing order. Generally, if you wait a few seconds, back away from the kiosk, and then check in on it again, you'll see that the cargo now indicates transfer to cargo deck required in orange text. This means you're clear to proceed to the cargo deck. Another error you may run into is that the terminal will advise waiting for pending result with a failed error. This is because there's some kind of desync between your ship's state and what the cargo terminal sees. If this happens to you, I've had good luck fixing it by returning to my ship, laying in one of the beds, and holding F looking to the bottom left of the screen and selecting the logout option, then logging back in. Keep in mind that if you bedlog like this, you should place your ship near the station in an area that isn't frequented by vacant ships or other players. There's a chance when you log back in, you get on a different server and your ship could attempt to occupy the same space as another ship on the server, resulting in damage or ship death to yourself or both ships. Return to the commodity kiosk and try to place your order again. Exit the kiosk and head back to your hull C after making a purchase. Once you're safely back in the pilot seat of your hull C, you need to call the station cargo deck. This is similar to the landing services in the comms tab of your Moby Glass, but you're looking for the cargo option. They will check in over the ship radio and let you know they have a deck assignment for you. Look around outside your ship near the large cargo area of the station and find the glowing cube outline. That would be a good time to extend your cargo spindle. Hold F, look down to the three toggle switches near the edge of your display console, and select the center one labeled Extend Cargo Spindle. Fly into the cube, align yourself in the middle, and stop moving. Eventually cargo services will hail you again and let you know they're starting to load. If the message on screen keeps advising you to stop moving, just move around a bit in the cube and then stop and wait for a few more seconds. Eventually it'll start loading you up once you get in the exact right spot at once. When your cargo has been completely loaded, Cargo services will hail you a final time, letting you know it's time to depart. The station ATC is very aggressive about wanting to impound your ship if you hang around too long, so get on the throttle and head away from the station as soon as you're loaded up. Once clear of the station, press F2 to open your star map and search for your destination. Plot a route and start your quantum journey. When you arrive at your sail destination, you'll need to check in with the station admin to start the sail process. Avoid the docking ports, they're more trouble than they're worth, and since your ship is still sitting in space anyway, they offer no protection like a hangar would. Head straight into the landing pad and just park next to one of the doors. EVA to the pad, note the landing pad number you're at, enter the station, and head to the admin. Sell your cargo and head back to the landing pad you noted when you arrived. Enter your ship and take off. Once you're back in space, call up cargo services again for your unloading deck assignment. 
Repeat the process from earlier and fly into the glowing cube and stop. Wait for your unload to complete. Once done, you should have been paid and you're free to move on to your next commodity. If you have a trade route where you can purchase at the station you're at, fly over to a pad and head to the admin. If not, lay in a route for your next destination. When it comes to what commodities to trade, there's a couple of resources for you. The Commodity Price Alerts journal entry in the game that you can get to by pressing F1, then clicking on Journal. Look for commodities that have listings in both overstock and understock. Buy from the location with the cheapest overstock price and sell to the location with the highest understock price. A better option is to head to the amazing website, SC Trade Tools. That's sc-trade.tools. Head to the Trade Routes page, enter your ship, initial investment credits, and hit Submit. This will spit out a list of community-sourced commodity price results that you can use to plan your trade routes in-game. I recommend turning on Show Stock Details and entering your ship's cargo capacity into Minimum Inventory Capacity. This will let you see if you can even sell your whole cargo load at a location or not. And finally, a couple of credits to some of the websites I used to make this video possible. To create my tier list at the beginning of the video, I used a combination of the new Fleet View on Starship42.com to generate some ship images, and TierMaker.com. I have no affiliation with any of these sites, but they provide great tools and deserve a shout out. Before I leave you, quick reminder that if you're a new player, you can use my referral code from the beginning of the video or in the video description to get yourself an extra 5,000 in-game currency if you sign up for a game package and you like the video. Thanks for checking out this video, everyone. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I do my very best to read them all and reply when I have an answer. Please like the video and subscribe if you'd like more Star Citizen content like this. See you in the verse.